Hi, and welcome to Your Choice 2022 general election coverage on Home TV. I'm Sydney Kenzer. Today we're here for a candidate interview with Penelope Cernoglu, who is a Democrat running for 75th District Representative in the Michigan State Legislature. Thanks so much for joining us today. At this time, we'd like to give you the opportunity to briefly introduce yourself to our viewers. Sure. So um, in, in sum, um, I'm a mom. I'm an attorney. I'm a small business owner. I'm a former Ingham County Commissioner, and I'm a longtime Democratic Party activist. Um, I grew up in Southfield, Michigan. I attended um, U of M undergraduate, and I graduated from Michigan State Law School. Um, after law school, I worked for EVES, our local domestic violence agency. I did a lot of public defense work, and I also did some pro bono family law. Um, I also began directing um, the voter registration drives on Michigan State's can campus. Um, every year, we registered thousands of students. Um, and at the time, um, I got connected with um, Practical Political Consulting and Mark Rebner, um, who were overseeing um, those drives. Um, I took over as the owner of Practical Political Consulting um, several years later. Um, we are a nonpartisan data firm, and we also um, specialize in petition work. Um, so we help um, progressive groups like Voters Not Politicians um, and various labor organizations um, with their petition language and make sure their signatures are valid uh, before submitting them. And in some cases, we challenge petitions. Um, as a county commissioner, um, I spearheaded the trails millage um, and the animal shelter millage. And um, I've been active in our community, um, just in many different um, roles um, for the past 20 years, um, engaging with a lot of different nonprofits, um, a lot of different campaigns and issues. Um, and I hope to continue to serve. Thank you. Each 75th district candidate will be asked a standard list of questions. For question one, if you have any more to share on this, please explain how your education and professional background make you an ideal candidate for 75th district representative in state legislature. Sure. So I think that um, you know by being active in the community and um, doing so many um, different things, um, it will enable me to be an effective advocate um, for our district and um, just really work um, with everyone in the community to ensure that um, we're all represented. Please tell us about the communities and people of the 75th district and how you plan to meet their needs. Sure, so the 75th house district is, um, well, as they all are, a new district. Um, and I, I really love this district. It's East Lansing, um, part of Meridian, north of Grand River. Um, all the way up through St. John's, so Bath Township and um, various other Clinton County townships, as well as Langsburg. Um, I started my door-to-door -door program um, in Langsburg um, and then went on to Clinton County. Um, and I've since then knocked over 10,000 um, doors and had so many conversations. And I, I was really um, just so happy to connect with all the voters in the new parts of the district. Um, and they were very excited that someone was you know, knocking on their door, uh, making that effort in some of the more rural parts um, of the district, um, especially uh, me being a Democrat, they had not had Democrats um, you know, representing their community um, for a while. Um, so I made a lot of um, you know, really good connections throughout the district. And um, you know, one thing I learned um, as I did all those doors um, was that um, in a lot of cases, um, you know, we all had the same um, issues and values. I mean, the moms and dads in St. John's had the same hopes and dreams for their kids um, as the moms and dads in Hazlitt. And the seniors, I mean, in Williamston Township had the same, um, you know, concerns with health care and fears for our democracy um, as the seniors in East Lansing. So I, I, I heard the same issues come up um, time and time again. Um, and, you know, I think that, um, you know, it's it's a good thing now that our districts um, encompass, you know, not only um, one type of um, you know demographic, but we have like suburban and rural communities um, in the same district, or urban and rural and suburban, so that we can all, um, you know, more effectively um, serve the state as a whole and really understand, you know, the different um, issues um, that people in different communities uh, might face. So I'm I'm really happy with this new district and. Uh, and serving in it. 
The next several questions will cover prominent issues throughout Michigan. First of all, please comment on Proposal 22-3 and share your thoughts on the current and future governing of abortion in Michigan. Sure. So um, I very much um, support Proposal 3. I am 100 percent um, pro-choice. Um, a few months ago, I shared my own abortion story. Um, I, you know, when I first got married, I, you know, very much wanted to have um, a child. And, you know, I was in a position um, where my husband and I, um, you know, we, we were facing um, infertility issues. Um, so we were seeing a specialist and um, I had two miscarriages and one of, um, on my second miscarriage, I had to have a um, DNC procedure, um, which actually, um, could be affected um, by anti-abortion laws and restrictions. Um, you know, women that want to have their miscarriages removed could be prevented from those type of procedures, um, as well as a lot of other very necessary um, healthcare procedures um, for women. So, I, I think that all women women have a story, you know, about how these laws could affect them in the future. And I stand, um, you know, I stand with every woman who wants to have an abortion for any reason or no reason at all. Um, and I think that um, reproductive health um, is very important for the future, you know, of our state um, and our nation. And it will definitely be something I stand behind. Please speak on the state's teacher shortage and your plans, if any, to address it. Sure. So we definitely have. Um, a crisis um, in a teacher shortage right now here in Michigan. Um, and I, what we need to do to address it is ensure that our teachers are getting the resources they need. Our public schools need to have as much funding as they need. Um, the ones that are falling behind um, need to get more funding um, instead of less funding. Um, Teachers have to, uh, you know, have good support staff, and, and school employees also need to be supported by us, and they have to have good pay, good benefits, um, and just a good environment to work work in. We have to provide um, the things in the classroom so that they can focus on teaching and not have to, you know, worry about things that are not their responsibility. Um, for example, they don't need to, you know, worry about arming themselves. They need to, you know, worry about teaching kids, and. We also need retention programs and recruitment programs. Um, a lot of times that's loan forgiveness, incentives, um, and making teachers really feel respected because I believe it's the most important job um, that anyone could have is teaching our kids. So we should treat it that way. Uh, I mean, teachers should be listened to and respected and we should you know, ask them what they want and figure out how, how we can make that happen. Share your thoughts on and any plans for school safety throughout the state. Sure, and thank you for that question. That that has uh, and and to me that that means um, gun safety, and that has come a lot up a lot um, throughout the campaign. Um, I mean, you know, as a mom, uh, most recently my my daughter, she's in first grade. She said we're going to have a. Um, a, you know, a school shooter drill. And that's something no one's child should ever have to experience at like six years old. And we can change that. We have the responsibility to change that. Um, and going, you know, through my district, I, I wasn't sure, you know, how everyone would feel about it, if that would be different among gun owners, um, you know, versus non-gun owners. But Again, what I found was that everyone was concerned with this issue, um, you know, and it wasn't, a, you know, it wasn't a only Democratic issue. Republicans had concern as well. Um, after, um, you know, one of the shootings, I was canvassing in St. John's, and I was, you know, thinking like, well, you know, what, you know, are people going to be saying, you know, today about issues? And everyone I talked to wanted to talk about. You know, gun safety. Uh, one woman, she told me, I have 10 guns in my house, but I want my grandkids to be safe at school. So I want to see common sense gun safety legislation. And that means a lot of different things to a lot of people. Um, but, you know, some things we can easily do is safe storage, safe storage, extreme risk protection orders, banning military style weapons. Um, raising the age, raising the waiting period, universal background checks. And you know, from what I found, um, 
there are a lot of um, gun owners who support this. I mean, in in my meet and greets that I had, um, you know, throughout throughout the um, the district, um, some rooms I I would talk to you know I would say, well, raise your hand if you're a gun owner. And everyone raised their hand. Raise your hand if you want to see common sense gun safety legislation. And everyone raised their hand because. Yeah, this, this is just something that we have to do moving forward. Um, we have we have to do it for our kids and for our communities. So, so I'm you know definitely uh, it's definitely one of my priorities. Share your thoughts on Michigan's current infrastructure and any improvements you'd plan to make. Sure. So, I mean, we you know with infrastructure, there's always you know so much um, that can be done. Um, you know, I'm fully supportive of all the work that um, Governor Whitmer is doing with the roads and the bridges, and I just want to see it continue. Um, I want to you know support um, you know as, as much continuation um, as of that as we can do. Um, I also want to see um, you know more um, clean energy infrastructure. So that might mean more solar, more um, wind energy, um, and just a better infrastructure so that we can move our state um, in that direction. What is your attitude towards fiscal responsibility in the state government? Sure. So I I believe we should be fiscally responsible. Um, it's important that we don't um, you know hurt working families. Um, Along the way, that we make sure that you know everyone um, is getting, still getting the resources um, you know that they, they need. Um, but you know we should always you know be fiscally responsible. How do you plan to address economic instability and inflation within the state? Sure. So inflation, um, you know, as we know, is a nation nationwide problem, um, and we just have to continue. Uh, Helping you know families by um, having a living wage, you know, raising the minimum wage so that people can continue to afford um, basic needs um, like food and and clothes and gas and you know and even beyond that. I mean, we need more than basic needs to be um, you know a good place to live. Uh, and in some cases, that's reducing the cost of health care, reducing the cost of housing, um, reducing the cost of prescription drugs. So we just have to do things to, um, you know, help families um, be able to, um, you know, have a good quality of life. Please address the preservation of Michigan's natural resources. Sure. So um, I, you know, I love Michigan, and I think that we are one of the very best states because we have our Great Lakes, which is an amazing, you know, resource. And there's, you know, nothing um, I enjoy doing more than like, you know, going to one of the Great Lakes and the sand dunes. And I, I just think it's something that we we treasure and we have to, you know, protect and preserve. Um, I, you know, stand with the governor and the attorney general in, you know, shutting down Line Five. Um, I. I think we need to have more funding for the DNR and um, the Eagle so that we can, uh, you know, enforce environmental protections. We need to do more things with polluter pay, um, and just, you know, putting in place all those protections um, so that so that we can um, continue to um, have have these these amazing natural resources in our state. Please address Michigan's opioid usage and the statewide presence of fentanyl. Sure. So one of the first things um, you know that we can do is just take away um, immunity for drug manufacturers um, of you know, for opioids, and we can also do more with education programs and just ensuring that prescribing opioids is a last resort, um, you know, rather than a, a first go to. Um, and we need to have more um, access available for people who. Um, do have an addiction and need to get help. We have to, we just have to have more resources available, um, you know, both locally um, and statewide, so that we can um, we can help them. How do you believe the district and the state of Michigan should approach new or continued diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts? Sure. So that um, that question kind of has a lot um, in it, um, and there's a lot you know that we can do um, on all of those fronts. I mean. You know, certainly with public education, through funding, we can address some inequities. Um, health, there's so many healthcare inequities that, that we can address, as well as you know, environmental justice issues. Um, and 
a few, a few years back, I served on the East Lansing Human, um, Human Rights Commission, and we would um, accept complaints for um, like discrimination, um, basic complaints. And I think having processes and mechanisms in place um, to make sure that um, you know, discrimination isn't happening, that's another way that we can address inequities. Um, and some cities like East Lansing have a diversity and inclusion um, position um, on their city staff. So locally, um, more uh, municipalities could try to take a proactive approach um, on some of these, these things. Um, where I see myself um, most fitting in, um, because I have experience um, with like public defense and as, a ter as an attorney, um, is in relation to our criminal justice system. And we still have a lot of inequities um, in our courts, um, you know, with the prosecutor's office and the defense, um, as well as in some of our um, our policing issues. Um, so there's really um, a lot that that needs to be and can be done. And I, I hope we continue to move forward with all of those. We've reached our final question. Please provide a closing statement sharing your goals for your district and state. Sure. Um, so I'm just going to go back to the beginning, kind of. I'm, I'm a mom, I'm an attorney, I'm a small business owner, um, former Ingham County Commissioner, and a longtime Democratic Party activist. Um, I've been engaged in our community for the past um, 20 years, and uh, I, I really look forward um, to serving and working with everyone um, in the community. I, I believe my job um, would be um, to represent everyone, and uh, I and I believe I, I can, I can um, do that job and hope that you will consider me. Thank you. Thank you again so much for joining us. And thank you for tuning in to this candidate interview with Penelope Cernoglu, a Democrat running for 75th District Representative in the Michigan State Legislature. I'm Sydney Kenzer, inviting you to watch live election night coverage here on Home TV on Tuesday, November 8th.